Okay, so we have now terminated the defrost cycle. The freezing of the coil starts. We have power to the solenoid valve, but the fan is delayed. Remember, we looked at this defrost termination and fan delay, and there's a dead band between 25 degrees and the 55 degree contact. So for the time it takes for the coil to get from its defrost temperature down to its operating temperature, this contact is in limbo So we and is not made. So there's a little bit of a time delay before this contact makes, which delays the starting of this fan. So we're back to the um, freeze cycle now. So after after the coil has cooled down to 25 degrees Fahrenheit, the, def, uh, the fan delay part of the defrost termination and fan delay has now made contact to um, allow the neutral to flow through to turn on the fan. So we're back to where we originally started, 115 volts in to the EVAP fan motor. We do have a complete circuit through the um, defrost termination and fan delay. The fan is operating. We have 115 volts at the uh, thermostat, passes through the thermostat, solenoid valve is activated, compressor is on, and we are now in the freeze cycle. So in, if this is set for four times a day, it will go through the freeze cycle, defrost, defrost termination, fan delay, and back to the freeze cycle four times a day. It's really important to understand this process because if you're having defrost problems and the coils icing up, it can be it could be the solenoid valve, it could be the defrost heaters not working, it could be the defrost termination and fan delay not operating, the fan could be bad, the clock motor can be bad, solenoids can be bad, or we could have stuck contacts over here on the on the on the defrost clock. So it's really important to understand how this works and why they work and um, know that how this is wired in these diagrams is not always what you're going to see and you know there's there may be a difference sometimes the defrost and many times a defrost clock is outside is wired up through the attic or through a crawl space to the um, evaporator itself so it's not going to be in close proximity so you just need to understand the relationship between the two make sure you get this burned into your brain uh, print out some of from the student handouts get some colored pencils make some notes go through this over and over make sure that you get it if you don't um, shoot me an email I would prefer that you post it in the class forum that way everybody can get a chance to um, share in learning alright we'll see you in the next chapter